In today's video, we're going to be talking about the Crocodile Baby here. Now, this is a pretty interesting quadcopter due to a couple things. And I'm also going to be discussing how this compares to its competitors, such as the Flywoo variant, which is the one I've flown. I still haven't flown the iFlight variant. So this is called the Geb RC Crocodile Baby here, and it comes in two different variants. We have an HD and we also have the analog. I have the analog here because the HD wasn't available at the time. Now, what we're going to cover today is its overall PID tune out of the box, its flight characteristics, and I'll explain what I mean in a bit on that. Also, the overall execution and the design of the frame or the way they've executed it, which, to be honest, is by far currently my favorite uh, long range four inch quadcopter, or, you know, this new class here. So before we jump any deeper, the timestamps are down below, so you can go ahead and skip to whatever part of the video you'd like. Now we're going to go ahead and start with the accessories and also the specifications. So first thing, what do you get in the box? Well, you get the quadcopter itself. For example, here we have the analog variant, which comes with a 600 milliwatt video transmitter. We have our GPS, a long ass antenna, which is really great. And we also do get two sets of propellers, which are Gemfan 4025. So they are four inch bi-blade propellers with a 25 pitch. Now, if we flip this quadcopter over, something I really like, and a lot of people are going to really appreciate here, is that it's not a unibody. And that's a really nice thing. And they also do provide you with two extra arms, which is really great to see here. Because as we know, the lighter we go, the less overall durability we'll probably end up having. And especially if we have a unibody, this would probably be much better. And it's also much cheaper to manufacture because you don't have to use the whole carbon plate here you can actually get more out of a carbon plate so it's more efficient in terms of manufacturing and at the same time the repairability would be much better in what ways you might say well one you don't have to completely remove the stack and every single thing if you wanted to replace the whole body the bottom plate i would say here you could just replace the arm and you're good to go iFlight didn't go that route which is kind of a shame but i still haven't tested theirs so hopefully i get my hands on one of those now also it's highly recommended if you wanted the 30 minutes of flight time however i did not achieve 30 minutes of flight time due to the weather conditions now if you don't know this if you're flying below zero degrees celsius to be exact you basically get one third of your battery so if you have a three minute battery you'll probably be flying 50 seconds to a minute it gets pretty bad when it gets to that temperature so that's why i wasn't able to get its full performance but i did get a pretty insane flight time even though with these really terrible conditions here i'll have a link to this battery that's hot, that's specific to this quadcopter from geb rc now keep in mind don't think you'll be able to put this on anything above a four inch because the discharge rate is much lower than anything else you could probably come up with your own custom 650 18 650s however this one has a pretty low discharge rate which is acceptable for this type of quadcopter here 3000 milliamp that is insane and it is a forest and this thing can take any other forest that you want to put in here which is a really nice thing now for camera they went with caddix not my favorite but it did the job just fine. I didn't have any issues there. Now, the GPS also worked really great, even though we had very terrible uh, weather conditions, which I found was really nice. And I think I had 13 GPS locks. It's in the footage. You can see it while I'm flying. It also comes with the buzzer here. Now, they've also sent me a separate buzzer to show it to you guys here. Uh, obviously, you guys, most of you probably know these, that once it detects that there's no power, then it initializes and it starts beeping after a while. So it could help you find your quadcopter even if your battery gets ejected here. It has a 100 dB buzzer on board and it has a really bright red LED, which is which can be very useful, especially if you crash and if something is blinking, it'll make it a little bit easier to find here. So I'll have a link to this also down below. And they also wanted me to share with you their smoke stopper here, which goes up to 6S and it does XT30s and uh, XT60s. So yeah, this is, I think it was pretty cheap. I think it was like five bucks or something. Very useful to have if you don't want to build your own uh, smoke stopper there. So let's dive into the specs here. So for motors, they're using 1404 2750 kV motors. Now, when I flew the flywheel long range variant, what I found is that it wasn't as acrobatic as I'd like it to be. And it was like the, I would say, I don't know, like the three years ago when, when you built a six inch quadcopter, you know, like a ZMR250 or any of those, it felt uh, floaty but not locked in and it wasn't really fun to fly acrobatic maneuvers however with this setup and the tune and the motors and just everything about it even with this battery this is the only battery i've been flying it with the acrobatic ability is insane and you have to take something into consideration this thing weighs 147 grams 
and the battery weighs 204 grams. Now let's dive a little bit deeper into the quadcopter itself here. So what we have is they're using their all-in-one board. This is a 20 amp all-in-one board here and it is an F4 board. So we have the ESCs and the flight controller and uh, LC filter built into one board, which is this one. I'll have a link down below if you wanna check out the specs. It's a 20 amp board. I think it's a Beal Heli S here. And if we look inside, it's, it's very clean. The execution is really nice, actually. So here's the board that has basically everything. And above that right there, we have our video transmitter, which is 600 milliwatts. But if I wanted more range, I'd probably swap that out to something else. I'm not saying it doesn't have good range, but if, if obviously I wanted analog long range, I'd probably go for something a little bit beefier than that, possibly. But obviously, it would increase the weight. We also do have a plastic separator right there, which is nice. It gives a lot of uh, room for the video transmitter to breathe and also avoid any sort of uh, electromagnetic interference here. And we also do see that we do have a low ESR capacitor, and that is something that's really great to see here. Uh, to be exact, this is a Chinese branded one, which I don't know what brand this is, but it is a 25 volt and it seems to be a 470, probably a little bit less. And I just found it. It's a 330 microfarad 25 volt capacitor here. Um, if I really wanted to use this a bit more often, I'd probably switch it out to maybe a 470 uh, Rubicon 25 volt and I'd probably be happier with that. Uh, that's just my opinion here. We also see that we have our GPS, which I talked about earlier, and the signal, well, really great that we have a really long antenna. There was no interference basically between those two, so that was something uh, really nice to see and something you actually would expect uh, to be. There would be no problems. Now, if you come from the RC airplane hobby, you'd know that sometimes sticking stuff next to a GPS isn't always the best to do. Now, as you're looking at the quadcopter like this with these battery straps, the propellers, and also an XM Plus receiver that I've installed myself here, the overall weight is 147 grams, uh, which is really great. And again, this battery is a bit heavier than the quadcopter itself, but it was kind of insane that I was basically mostly flying around 30% throttle. So there is a lot of headroom for all that performance to be shown. But again, I couldn't really push it as hard as I'd like it to due to the weather conditions. And that's going to be expected throughout the winter season here. And there's really nothing else I can do about that. Now, would I recommend this quadcopter? Actually, I would prefer flying this one over the Flywoo due to its overall performance and PID tune. It felt really locked in and it didn't do anything weird. And I really, I could have just constantly flown it acrobatic style without an issue here. And that was something I really like. I really like having the, the, the best of both worlds. It felt kind of almost like a toothpick, but it really wasn't. But in a way it did feel like a toothpick because it felt pretty nimble actually, but believe it or not with this battery, not only that, you get that long, long, long flight time and uh, the overall weight is very low, but again, uh, this is a very heavy battery, but the overall quadcopter here is around 147 grams as is, and you could probably shed some more weight if you uh, mess around with the 3D printed parts here. Now for me in this category, as the second one I've ever used, I've actually make this currently the top one in my opinion. And again, it's a personal preference here. I haven't tested the Cadex variant of this, uh, but hopefully I will get a chance to, and I don't see it's going to make much of a difference, probably just a, a small weight increase. They've actually tuned this properly. I mean, like really proper. And again, that is something really nice to have here. The overall carbon is pretty thin, but it is to be expected because obviously, as the name states, it's a long range micro that's supposed to be super light. And that's what we have here. You could also shed more weight with probably a different GPS. And if you didn't need a GPS, you could get rid of that. So there is a lot of improvement to shed weight if you're looking into shedding more weight. And well, that's it, guys. All I could really tell you is it's a really great quadcopter. I really enjoyed it. It's a, from a well-known company. And Geb RC has never let me down. And wait till you see my 7-inch build with the Geb RC frame. You're going to be quite amazed at some of the findings I found. And with that being said, everything is linked down below. There's also 7% coupon code if this thing's not on sale. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.